all it can take is one bad day to ruin 20 months of sobriety. We're headed on a trip right now, a really important trip actually. This is one of the ways that I protect my sobriety. It's actually crucial to my sobriety to just leave town sometimes. On this trip, I'm gonna open up a little bit about my story. So we just got here to the Souk River area. This is the first stop on this trip. There's a pretty big lesson to be learned here. This lesson kind of ties into a part of my life about 20 months ago. So a bit about my story. 20 months ago, I ended up in the hospital. It was the third time I ended up in the hospital that summer actually. And this time I ended up having to get hooked up to IVs into both arms. They were feeding me potassium, sodium, saline, basic things your body needs to stay alive when you're in critical condition. So essentially I had drinking myself into critical condition. It was pretty terrifying. I couldn't eat for days. I couldn't keep water down. I was averaging about 30 to 35 drinks a day between beer and vodka. I got myself to the point where to not shake in the morning and to feel okay, I actually had to drink when I woke up. I had to drink through the night. It's about four to six drinks through the night and about three drinks in the morning just to feel like I was okay. My body relied on alcohol and it's actually pretty dangerous when you get to that point. You can actually die from withdrawals. The second time I was in the hospital that summer, they didn't give me a bed. I needed a bed to withdraw in because withdrawals are so dangerous. So when they finally gave me a bed to withdraw in, I was very thankful for that. This light bulb kind of went off in my head that this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for me to withdraw safely and maybe even get sober. So I really took it to heart. I was so thankful for that opportunity. And that's part of the reason we're here right now. We're heading to this waterfall called Mary Vine Falls. Part of my staying sober is getting out in nature and I go to waterfalls a lot because for me, they have this healing quality about them. They make me feel at peace in my heart and in my mind. A good friend of mine, Nathaniel, had posted a picture of Mary Vine Falls. I just thought, you know, that waterfall dries up. I should probably go get to see it before the summer. In the winter on Vancouver Island here, it can get pretty dreary and depressing. It rains most days here. But there's also good to be seen in that. One of the good things you can take away from all the rain here is the fact that waterfalls are so impressive in the winter and in the spring. The lesson here is that when you see opportunities, you have to take them and you have to be watching for opportunities. That's a huge part of my sobriety. You also have to stay thankful for what you do have when things seem dreary, and that's another huge part of my sobriety. to the second spot we're going to on this trip. We're gonna do something kind of scary for us tonight.
on our way driving out of the Souk Potholes area here, we saw that right there, which is a pretty big waterfall. We came to come check it out. There's so many things in life that you can find if you keep your eyes open for the good stuff. It's a way of life to try to seek the good, positive things that you have around you. And it's kind of ironic, actually, with this trip that we're on, having sun showers right now. It's pretty beautiful. We ended up making a quick stop in Souk here. I ended up leaving my jacket back in Nanaimo. That's probably not a good thing. Where we're going might be pretty cold, so we're gonna get some coffee, try to find a jacket or a rain poncho for me, and then continue on our trip. Guess that'll have to do. Some comfort chocolate. <laughs> We saw a pizza ability to get some pizza and you know you gotta look for the pizza abilities in your life, they're pretty important. <laughs> I have no idea how this pizza is gonna be. <laughs> and right there it says the best. We're glad it was a pizza ability for us to come here and get some food. I like pizza abilities. I like pizza abilities too. Alright and we're leaving soup now. So we just got here to the Juan de Fuca area of Vancouver Island and this is going to be our final destination for tonight on this trip. We're going to do something a little bit scary and that's going to bring me to another point in my story. A huge part of me recovering and being able to stay sober for as long as I have has been that I had to face my demons. I had to actually step into discomfort. I had to figure out what was bothering me and what was making me drink and I had to dive into it and I had to really look closely at my problems. I think I used to run away from a lot of things that bothered me before and that was tough. And now I try to step more into them. I try to understand them more. It's not easy. It's actually extremely difficult. Part of the reason we're here at the Juan de Fuca right now is to hopefully witness something we've never witnessed before, something extremely beautiful. And we don't want to camp where we're going. So part of what we're going to do is hike back up this trail we're about to hike down in the dark. That scares Kelsey a lot and that scares me a lot. We're doing it because we don't want to camp down there, but we're also kind of doing it because facing fears is an extremely important part of staying sober for me, of developing myself and developing my mental and emotional health to a state that is good for me. There's probably quite a few wolves and cougars around here. We're really hoping that tonight we stay safe. Facing your fears is important and the reward we get for doing this hike back up in the dark might be seeing the most spectacular thing at the right time. I think it's so important to step into discomfort, to embrace the things that are hard in your life. Once you get through those hard emotional times, what you get out of it is just so great. Mystic beach for a sunset with this waterfall. No matter how down you are, I don't think you can complain about this. This is just incredible. 
such a beautiful view. Seriously, just so good to do this. I'm so happy we came here. So sad to say goodbye to this place right now. We're gonna try to keep in pretty good spirits for this hike back up in the dark. None of us uh, really like doing this, especially at this time of year, because there's probably more animals out, but. <laughs> <laughs> She's making these loud noises because she wants to <laughs> keep the animals away. <laughs> With this situation, we definitely got our reward before we had to go through the discomfort, that's for sure. But I haven't uh, ever been excited to get back to a car to sleep in my life before, I don't think. Should probably get my headlamp out now. I'm already a little eerie walking back in these kind of woods in the dark. We're the only people over here. There's a first time for everything, I guess. I guess it's kind of nice that they put up these orange markers here. You get to an area here with like a light pocket. It makes me feel slightly less sketched out. That's a bit of a scary forest over there. <laughs> so we actually just decided to come back up here to the road because it's a little lighter. I feel like we'll risk jumping out of the way if a car comes, but getting eaten by an animal would suck. So we're just going to walk down the road the rest of the way. We found a little trail back up here. We made it. I can see lights. It's a parking lot. We are almost back at the car. So today is a new day. And every single day we kind of enter the unknown. It's unknown what's gonna happen today. And I'm thankful for today. I'm very thankful for what I have. I'm thankful that I get to sit here in the Juan de Fuca and drink coffee. This is something I do on a daily basis. I try to record three things I'm thankful for first thing in the morning. And it's really important that I do. You might have a good day when you thought you were going to have a bad day and you could have a bunch of horrible things happen when you plan to have a good day. It's unknown. Every day is unknown and I think it's important if you're in recovery to put in place a sort of plan that helps you to have a better day even if your day goes wrong. And for me, being thankful is huge for that. Having curiosity about the unknown can definitely be of use to somebody in recovery for sure. Kind of a way of embracing that good or bad can happen, but you can remember to be in control of yourself and your own actions and the things that you do. For me, it feels good to just do my best on a daily basis, do everything I can to be a healthy and happy person. I eat the same breakfast every day. Um, it's pretty healthy. It's spinach, eggs, whole wheat toast. There's a lot of control that you still have even when things in your life go wrong or go bad. So I take these vitamins every day. Vitamin D3, omega-3, and magnesium as well. I do this to keep my mind my body as healthy as I can. It all plays a part in helping me to stay sober is doing anything I can to feel good on a daily basis because if you don't feel good, it's a lot easier to feel like you're about to spiral. I drink a lot of coffee. It's uh, kind of a, I guess you could say a new addiction, but it's the lesser of many evils for me. This is kicking horse coffee. It's pretty expensive stuff. Um, I don't cheap out. I like to have one nemesis in my life that I can still enjoy and I don't worry about how much money I spend on it really. You know, I say every day is a new day and I say 
one bad day can ruin 20 months of sobriety because it's happened before. It happens to many people a lot. I'm pretty sure that's what happened to one of my best friends less than a year ago. I think he just had one bad day and one bad relapse can get you. That's why it's important to be aware that every day is unknown and it's important to practice learning to enjoy that. And that's what we're gonna do today. We've left the Mystic Beach area and we've driven here to this little gravel pullout and we're gonna go explore some unknown today. We're hoping we find something good, but if things are hard, if the path is hard, we accept that already and that's important. So far, this has been some pretty smooth sailing. Pretty easy little dirt road. No roots, no up and down, just kind of a steady, slow decline. So we just got onto kind of a more forested path here. This is a kind of a lesser known place to be, a lesser known trail, lesser known destination, so. Another beach we haven't explored before. Being here just feels so cool. One thing about entering the unknown is that sometimes you get to experience some of the most beautiful things you haven't seen before. This is Bear Beach. This is one of the places you can camp if you're doing the Juan de Fuca Trail. Never been here before, but it's so cool. This is one of the reasons right here that I love the Juan de Fuca so much. So cool. It's pretty much just about time to say goodbye to Bear Beach here. Pretty sad, this place is really magical. And to have it all to ourselves, wow. You know, I think one of the biggest reasons I started drinking in the first place was because I was living with trauma for so long that I hadn't dealt with. I had abandonment issues and because of it, I didn't love myself. I probably hated myself actually. So in order to learn how to love myself, I had to do a lot of work. I had to put a lot of time in, a lot of effort. And this is so important if you want to recover, if you want to get sober. One of the first things you have to do is learn to start forgiving yourself. Learn to start loving yourself. Pinpoint why you're sad. Pinpoint where the problem is and start to work on it. Start to dive into that horrible feeling. It's gonna suck. It's not easy, but for me, I know that part of why I drank so much and never got sober was because I think I wanted somebody to save me. I wanted somebody else to do it for me somehow. And that's not how it works. Unfortunately, you have to do it yourself. You have to put the work in. You have to go through really hard times to get to the other side. But trust me, it's worth it. It's so worth it to see what the other side feels like.
People can go sober for 10 years and then relapse and end up losing their families, their jobs, even their lives. And it's such a sad thing, but that's why it's so important to put in place a plan that allows you to stay sober if you're in recovery because sobriety and recovery are such a fragile thing. The amount of sadness and grief that I caused when I was drinking alone was enough to feel so much shame and I had to deal with that shame and I had to deal with that guilt and I did and it was possible. It was possible for me to deal with it and to start to feel good about myself again. To start to forgive myself and you can too if you're struggling. Anybody can. It's possible for anybody and I know that because I didn't think it was possible for me. It took me about five to ten times of trying to get sober and relapsing before I finally made it to 20 months, which is right now. Anybody who's struggling, you are the only person who can help yourself, and that is the solid truth. So what gave me the strength to be able to open up to the world and open up to YouTube with all my past problems and talk about things that are very, very fragile to me? Well. If this video reaches one person, even just one person, and it helps them, then I feel like it's all worth it.